So here's the problem. The maximum flight duration is only 1 minute 30 seconds before the engine gets too hot. I don't know much about coolant systems, but I'm going to find out the necessary information to improve the situation. So let's take a look at the coolant passageways on this 1981 60 horsepower Johnson and how I've got it connected to the radiator. Coolant comes out the bottom of the radiator and along to the water pump. The water pump pushes the water into the engine through my manifold and this is the hole into the engine. Notice it's restricted and not free flowing. It enters into the exhaust chamber and with the exhaust plate off we can see the small hole in the corner. It fills up that chamber and exits on the opposite side through a crack into the cylinder water jackets. From the water jackets it flows through the head which houses the thermostat into the head cooling waterways and finally exits out the bottom. The red plastic thing is an overpressure valve should the thermostat fail to open. The hot coolant would normally exit the engine and run down the exhaust inside the leg of the outboard but this is now where my manifold directs it to the top of the radiator. Now because the outlet pipe is close to the exhaust manifold I'm wondering if the exhaust heat is being transferred to the coolant. I want to move the outlet to C and I'm drilling a hole through the head plate opposite where it was before. I've made a union to screw into the head plate but the biggest through hole I can achieve is a 10mm diameter. Before I start doing all this I measured the maximum pump flow rate without going through the engine and it was 15 litres per minute. With the coolant going through the engine it was only 7.2 litres per minute so obviously the engine is restricting the pump's maximum flow rate. So I've removed the material in and out of the coolant stroke exhaust chamber to increase the flow. Then my friend Steve came over, had a look at the cooling issue and pointed this out to me. He said, why have you got the outlet coming out the bottom when on most engines it comes out the top? Uh... I then moved the outlet to the top of the cylinder head cover, enabling a much bigger through hole of 15 millimeters and measured the flow rate. The rate has increased from 7.2 litres per minute to 9.6 litres per minute. It's an improvement, but not enough in my opinion. From a bit of research on a similar engine, a flow rate of adequate cooling was 23 litres per minute at 6,000 RPM. It seems a temperature drop across the radiator at 6,000 RPM should be around 4 degrees. I ran the engine at idle and measured the temperature drop which was 4 degrees and it maintained an engine temperature of 52 degrees only on idle. In the next test I will see if the maximum flight time of 1 minute 30 seconds has been improved. But first I've got a little day out. It's currently 6am in the morning and the reason I'm not asleep is because I'm going up to Gloucester to have a R22 lesson. It's about two hours drive and uh, see you in a couple hours. Okay, we have arrived, just as a turbine helicopter is taking off. I'm not up on the models, but is this a Eurocopter? I don't know, but it sounds great. I've got a perfect day for this. Sun is shining and the wind is five to 12 miles an hour. I love going to airports because there is always interesting stuff to see. This jet engine test facility is very cool. We love a tour of that place. This is my second half hour lesson in an R22 and I did tell the instructor what I've been up to at home. I was nervous to tell him because reactions to my exploits aren't always well received, particularly from pilots, but I thought it was important to inform and show him. Luckily, after some questioning, he was complimentary about the engineering achievement and treated me as less of a novice, which was really nice. We first flew out to the southeast over Whitcomb Reservoir and he let me have the controls one at a time to get used to it. He said, you look scared, are you okay? And I said, yes, I was okay, but yes, I am a slightly nervous flyer, so did everything as slowly and as gently as I could. After getting used to the controls and him getting more comfortable with me, he said, shall we do a high altitude hover? I laughed and said, no. Come on, he said, it will be fine, and it was really quite something to stop in the air like that. Then he gave me the controls and said, throw it around a bit, turn in and pull some collective. Again, I wasn't keen, but did it anyway, and it was fine, but I didn't really pull any Gs. I'm not one for fairground rides. Bumper cars, maybe. Next was the hover challenge, and again, he gave me the controls one at a time. Pedals first, 
and they felt sensitive compared to mine. More like pressure than movement needed to control the anti-torque and I was pushing them the right way instinctively which is something I struggled with. Next was the sight click and I was told to look out to the horizon. It felt more sensitive than mine but similar. I was actually not reacting fast enough. With faster corrections but smaller movements things steadied out and the pilot induced oscillations reduced. With that sorted, now was the collective. This again was much more sensitive than I am used to and it reacts fast by comparison. He then gave me all three controls and for a short period I held the helicopter making the necessary corrections without his input. I was very pleased with this after the last time's disappointing personal performance. All of the time hovering 100% concentration is required and any distraction causes the loss of control of one or more of the controls. Would I be able to recover the situation without crashing is difficult to say at this point. You can see in the video that the instructor's hand is completely off the cyclic for at least 20 seconds. With a total of one hour's instruction on the R22, I'm happy. I have to say, the instructor Richard was brilliant, very friendly and encouraging. He couldn't have done more to help with progress. What a top guy. In the next video, I'll find out about my cooling mods.